make it any better. All right, uh, let's get started. Welcome, everyone. We're going to talk a bit about the Drush ecosystem. And uh, you guys will then ask uh, a bunch of questions. I'm looking forward to that. My name is Moshe Weitzman. I'm the Director of Research and Development at Acquia, a longtime Drupal core developer um, and uh, one of the Drush maintainers. I want to introduce two other Drush maintainers here, Jonathan Hedstrom from Open Sorcery. Uh, maintainer of Drush Make. Um, if you guys haven't been following closely, Make is now part of Drush 5. All right. Uh, Mark Sonnebaum, also a performance engineer at Acquia. All right. Just uh, want to give you an overview of what we're going to talk about today. Um, these are all of the projects or institutions that are part of the Drush ecosystem that we're going to talk about today. All right, so um, hopefully you'll find something you're interested in in this list, something you haven't heard about yet, um, and uh, maybe we can increase your Drush happiness here. I, I figure I can take uh, 30 seconds to introduce Drush for people who haven't heard about it. Um, after that, I'm going to assume that you have heard about it and used it. Um, Drush is a command line program, okay? Um, so it's not about web pages. It's not about uh, modules that you install into your Drupal site. Um, this is a command line program that actually works outside of Drupal um, and drives Drupal. Uh, the version that we're working on still is Drush 5. Um, that works with either Drush 6 or Drush 7 and sometimes Drush 8. Um, Drupal. Drupal, sorry. That was confusing. Uh, let's try that again. Drupal 5, Drupal 6. Not five, Drupal six, seven, and eight. OK. Um, the other thing I want to say is if you're just learning about Drush, um, there's a command that ships with it called Drush Topic. Uh, you definitely want to use Topic to read all of the documentation that we've written. OK, the first member of the Drush ecosystem that I want to talk about are um, two terrific ISPs or web hosts that um, you use to host your sites. Um, Acquia and Pantheon are specialists at hosting Drupal sites. Um, as uh, Drupal experts, they recognize that Drush integration is really important and they support it um, as well as anyone on the planet. Okay. Um, we can look a little bit about uh, how Acquia supports Drush. Um, there's a URL down here that we can go to. Uh, this is the Drush cloud reference for Acquia. Um, when you are an Acquia customer, you can run all of the usual Drush commands. Okay. In addition, Acquia cloud provides um, maybe 20 or so commands here that are custom to its environment that you can run. Um, what these commands do are let you uh, log in to the system and get authentication tokens. Um, and then you can do all the things that Acquia Cloud lets you do. You can push code to any of your environments. You get a dev stage or production environment with Acquia Cloud. Um, you can push code to any new environment, change what tag it's at and get. Um, you can create database backups. You can restore database backups. You can sling your uh, Drupal database around from one environment to the other. Um, you can learn uh, environment commands about what you're, what you're running in your environment, um, what tag it's at, and so forth. Push SSS, SSH keys and find out about your pending tasks. So um, there's like a tremendous amount of Drush integration that Acquia Cloud offers you. Um, the other um, big piece that it offers you is it gives you a site alias file with all the aliases to your environments. Okay, so on your local machine, you can um, SSH to the production environment and run commands there um, just from your local machine, okay? That's actually a feature of Pantheon also. They will provide you an alias file 
that lets you get to your environments also. Um, so definitely encourage you, if you're Drush fans, to host with one of those two. If either of those don't suit you, on uh, www.drush.org, we have a resources page. We list some other web hosts that are friendly uh, to Drush, which usually means they have Drush pre-installed for you. Okay. Um, just to show you a little bit about what that looks like here. Um, let me make this a little bit bigger. Whoops. The SA command stands for site alias, and it tells me all the site aliases I have on my system. Um, the ones at the top here were provided by Acquia Cloud. Okay, so acquia.com.prod is the production, www.acquia.com um, site. You know, I can go run commands against that. Um, no idea if it's going to work. Um, because I'm not on, uh, let's not even try that. <laughs> you know, you can find out more information about your aliases. Um, you can see that that has a remote host and a remote user, and, uh, and I can run commands against it. Okay? So those are um, how the, I, the web hosts participate in the Drush ecosystem. Next uh, big project I want to mention is the Agar project. Okay, um, Agar uses Drush um, very deeply in its system and all over in its system. Agar is a way to install, upgrade, deploy, and backup a network of Drupal sites. So uh, if you are in the situation where you have a dozen or a hundred um, or several hundred sites that you have to manage um, and you want to self-host them, uh, you, you <clears throat> don't want to use Pantheon and and Acquia Cloud to do it. Agar is a great solution, okay? Um, one of the great things it does is it enforces best practices around code deployments. So if you are gonna do a push of your code, um, you basically prepare a package in Agar and it runs through a script of um, deploying to a new directory, changing your um, symlink so that the web server now serves a new set of code, running the database upgrade, um, and giving you tools to roll back if you're not happy with that release, okay? So definitely check out agarproject.org uh, if you're interested in learning more about agar. It's a pretty big system. I, I can't demo it right now. Uh, it would take a little bit too long, but I uh, just want to call that one out. Okay, Devel. Devel is a project on drupal.org. This is a module. Uh, it runs inside your Drupal site, okay? Um, it stands for development. It's made for Drupal developers. Um, it has pretty nice Drush integration that I can show you. Um, the kinds of things it does, you can generate content, okay? Generate users, terms, images, all of this kind of stuff. If you're building out a Drupal site and your client hasn't given you the content yet, uh, it's a new site, you can just quickly populate it with lots of content um, and get a feel for exactly how it's working, show the client how it's working. It's really a nice tool. Um, Devel has Integration with the xhprof PHP extension. Uh, that's really useful for profiling. If you set up Devel's integration with xhprof, you will get a link to your xhprof run at the end of every Drush request. Uh, so you can go see why your Drush request was slow or not slow and go in and um, optimize the functions that took the most time. Okay, super handy. Um, and there are a couple commands for um, for viewing source code. So let's take a look at Devel's Drush integration. I'm in a Drupal 7 site right now. So Gen C stands for generate content. All right. So um, the next two parameters, we can learn what they mean here. If you just append dash H on any Drush command, you see the help for that command, okay? Um, so we're passing an argument for number of nodes, which is 50 nodes. We're gonna pass uh, a maximum comments of four, all right? So take off the dash H, run it. Um, Drush is now creating 50 nodes and up to four comments on each of those nodes, okay? That's all it took, took uh, maybe a second or two. 
I can go to my site. Uh, that's the admin page of my site. Here's the home page. Um, you can see that there's lots of Latin nodes here. Okay, this is what Devel does. It fills your nodes in with Latin. It's field API aware. Okay, so there's an image field on article nodes. It went ahead and generated an image and put it in there. It generates these sort of quadrant images with a circle in them, which is cool. We can thank, thank Nate Haug for that. Um, and there's comments on these nodes, okay? So that's generate content. Um, generate users. Uh, it's about to generate 50 users, all done. There's some notice here that's happening that appears not to matter um, that I can look into at some point, but um, I verified earlier that it is, in fact, generating users. All these users were, were created 14, 14 seconds ago, okay? If you were to put um, field API fields on your user entities, it would populate those also. Other commands that Devel offers. This is the help command. Um, it has a dash dash filter option. I passed filter equals Devel, which says just show me the Devel commands. That can be handy sometimes. You can also use grep for that kind of thing. But uh, some people don't like to pipe, so we have a filter. Um, here um, are two more commands that I was starting to talk about, fn-hook and fn-view. If you want to look at your um, Drupal site and find out who implements what hook, um, that's what fn-hook is all about. Just pass the hook name, and you can see that there's 19 implementations of hook permission in uh, my Drupal 7 site, and I can go ahead and look at the source for any of these. Um, I'll take number two, which is comment permission, and now I can see that function, okay? Um, and uh, fn-view is the same sort of thing for any function. It doesn't have to be um, a hook. There's the user access function, and you can pipe that to VI I haven't done this in a while. No. Uh, it's the other way around, right? It's not a pipe. You have to pipe to vi dash VA space. Oh, really? Yeah. Tell it to read from center again. Let's see how good you are, Mark. Wait. One dash? Yep. There it is. Good job. Thank My you. favorite command in vi. Uh, I'm spazzing out here. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, where were we? We were getting past Devel. Migrate. Okay. Migrate is a module um, that I maintain along with Mike Ryan, and its goal is to uh, take data from other systems and move it into Drupal. Okay. This um, is a pretty uh, extensive module and features fantastic Drush integration. So I can show you a little bit about how uh, Migrate uses Drush. Um, let's take a look at that. So um, Migrate offers about a dozen commands. All right. The first one we'll use is Migrate status, which has an alias to ms. Migrate status uh, will show us that we have a group of migrations that are beer migrations. Okay, this, this terminology will be familiar to people who, are, who have used the migrate example module, which is like the docs for migrate. Um, there's three nodes that haven't been migrated yet, uh, or three terms, I should say, beer terms. Um, we can go ahead and migrate those. The migrate import command is how you do that. Okay, so it just uh, processed three terms, and three were created. If you weren't happy with those terms, you looked at your website and something was wrong with them, you just roll them back and fix your code and roll them forward until you have a successful term migration. Okay, so the point here is that uh,
Sure, the, the question was, what are we migrating from here? Um, yeah, briefly, migrate module is about migrating either from an old Drupal site to a new Drupal site, or migrating from some other database or file system and putting content into nodes and users and terms and so forth. So it's a generic data migration tool. Yeah, that's true. Um, why don't we talk afterwards? Because I have a lot to say about data migration, but not here. And so I really want to answer that question. All right, but we'll, we'll do it right after this talk. I did, yes. OK. Um, OK, next uh, member of the ecosystem, site upgrade. Site upgrade is a command that used to be part of Core Drush. Um, it got so full featured that we actually moved it out into its own project. Okay, so the project is called Drush underscore SUP. Um, its goal is to um, give a really uh, robust way for you to run a um, upgrade from Drupal 6 to Drupal 7. Um, so in a sense, it's an alternative to Migrate module, which also um, provides that service. Um, but this really follows the traditional um, way to upgrade Drupal sites, which is to run update.php. Um, so what, what SUP does is uh, you install it into your Drupal 7 site, and you point it at your Drupal 6 site, and you say, um, go upgrade me. All right, so it will look at all the modules that you are running in your Drupal 6 site and pull down the latest stable or dev releases of everything that is available in Drupal 7, and then it will copy your Drupal 6 database to your Drupal 7 site, and it will run uh, the upgrade path on it, okay? Or it will install the Drupal 7 site, and then it will run the upgrade. So it's a real full-service tool for major version upgrades. Um, it's the sort of tool that doesn't work the first time you try it, okay? That's the nature of major version upgrades, is that not everything that was on your Drupal 6 site is available for Drupal 7. Okay, so um, it's a best effort, and then you have to open up your Drupal 7 site and see what's broken, and make you know tell uh, SUP about what you want to do. If you used to use content profile in Drupal 6, and you want to use user entities in Drupal 7, you can say, all right, don't upgrade my profile stuff, or write a special update function to handle that kind of migration. Um, and then your, your upgrade will start working. So it, it's very much a way to just like run an upgrade, trash what you did, run another upgrade, fix some things, and keep doing that until you have a nice upgrade path for your site. Okay? Um, here's a module, um, which is pretty handy, again, for developers, called Module Builder. Um, it has a nice UI for um, doing its thing, but it has pretty great Drush integration also. Um, what Module Builder is about is get, the end goal is to give you a uh, .module file and a .info file and a .install file that are um, skeletons that you can adjust, um, but it's very much an accelerator, okay? So let me just show you and you'll get an even better feel of what it does. It's aliased to the command MB, okay? So I'm running Drush MB here. I get a warning here that is of no consequence, it appears. Um, enter the module name. So let's say we're building the temp5 module. Enter the required hook presets. I skip. Um, I don't know what it means. Enter the required hooks. Uh, so you can say that the module I want to write, temp5, I know that it's going to implement permission. I know that it's going to implement block info. I know that it's going to implement block view. Um, what's its human, human, ra human name, temporary five, what's its description, lorem ipsum, lorem ipsum, what's its dependencies, um, this is stuff that goes in the um, .info file, it depends on the OG module, and it's part of the devel package, okay? So what, um, MB has done here. Let me see where I can show you. All right, here's the proposed temp5.module file. 
Um, it put in nice oxygen at the top of the file like we're, we're supposed to do and told me where I'm supposed to customize it. It implemented uh, hook help for me and put all the help text in that I had pasted. It implemented hook block view for me and put the name temp5 at the beginning of the function. Okay? And it gave me a nice stub inside with a case of my block and the subject and content here for the block view. Um, I don't see block info here, so maybe I did something wrong when I inputted them all in, or it's maybe not called block info, I'm not sure. Um, in any case, uh, this is a really fast way to get started. Um, it has lots of options about where you want to write the files to when you're done, and if you want to write them, and uh, you don't actually have to go through that interactive wizard that I did. You can pass everything you want uh, to MB, Dresh MB, my module, menu cron, uh, dash dash write, dash dash quiet, my, the name is this, the description is this, and so forth and so on. So um, pretty neat function for getting started with modules. Okay. CTools export. Um, CTools in its latest versions has pretty nice Drush integration, uh, and specifically with its exportables feature. Um, if you add a really new module called export bonus, you get even more uh, Drush integration. And um, it's really pretty amazing all the stuff that export and export get bonus give you. So if you just run uh, Drush CTEX without any parameters, you get the interactive wizard again. Um, and it's asking me if I want to export everything or export some things. Let's just export everything. <clears throat> and it's telling me that the following blah 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 is going to happen. All right. Um, do I want to overwrite uh, the last module? Yes, yes, sorry, I should have said yes to all this stuff before I started. Okay, so what CTOOLS export has done in this directory is it has written out um, exported PHP for all the things that it supports, okay? So um, this is something that uh, a lot of people have used features for. Um, I'm kind of excited by this because it sort of cuts features out of the loop um, and just uses C tools directly to do exports. Okay, so if you look at um, these files here, That one's not, doesn't have a lot of contents, but if you have some imagination, you can get excited. Um, here, uh, we've taken all our path aliases and exported them. We've taken all our blocks and exported them. Aha, this is the one I want. Um, okay, so here's the system main Bartik block and it's been exported to code. Okay, same for all my other blocks. Content types, exported to code. Date formats, fields and instances, exported to code. Okay, filters, menus, roles and permissions, variables, vocabs. You know, all of this stuff is exportable by CTools and CTools export bonus. Okay, uh, presumably what you do here, you check these files into your Git repository you do a git pull on production and you have, um, you have new, new uh, configuration there, all right? Hopefully this can, this can get us through Drupal 7 until we have better stuff for Drupal 8 with the CMI system. So that was CTEX. Um, Omega and Zen themes. I wanted to point out that Drush isn't only for sysadmins and developers. Um, there's some things to offer for themers also. Um, both of these great base themes offer Drush integration, and they offer the same feature, which is that you can quickly create a sub-theme um, using Drush. So let me just demo that for you. 
So if I look at my list of commands, I have a command called zen. If I look at the help for zen, I can see that the main argument is the name of the theme I want to create, or the sub-theme, and optionally the machine name. So if I want to create the pretty theme, I just call drzen pretty. And it said the starter kit for pretty was created in my sites all themes directory. And here you would get um, all the things that didn't work too well. Um, that you would expect in a Zen starter theme. Okay? So instead of having to copy directories around, change a bunch of function names. Uh, it's gone ahead and done all that work for me. If I look at um, uh, template.php, you can see here that um, it's already replaced uh, the function names to be prefixed with pretty. Okay, so if I was just copying the starter theme, I'd have to do all this work myself, but the drush command went ahead and uh, did this work for me, okay? So there's things to like. Um, uh, themers have things to like from Dresh as well. Git release notes. Better to just show you what it does. This one is for um, module uh, for project maintainers on Drupal.org. Um, wow. Okay, so I ran drush rn, which is the release notes command. I passed two arguments, which is the git tag uh, that I want to start from and the git tag that I want to end at. So the drush 5.4 release to the drush 5.5 release. Here in an HTML list are all of the changes that happened during that time frame um, as uh, the commit logs tell us what happened. You can just copy and paste this perhaps clean it up a little bit and put it into your release node, okay? So this is a huge time savings uh, if you're a, a module maintainer. And uh, the project is git release notes on drupal.org. Okay, so uh, the next project is Drush Deploy. Mark is actually the uh, maintainer of Drush Deploy and uh, I'll let him introduce this one. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so, uh, Drush Deploy uh, is a tool to deploy your code, uh, not your content or anything else like that. If you've ever heard of a project called Capistrano, which I think there was a Capistrano session here, um, it's a great best practices way to get your code out there and possibly run tasks uh, when you're done. Um, I found that not a lot of people were using that, uh, possibly because it's just a Ruby project and it's not really just in our vocabulary. So I wrote Drush Deploy, which is just a complete ripoff of it. Um, but it uses parts of Drush to, uh, to enable that functionality. Because uh, the actual part of Drush Deploy that I had to write was really the only the deployment code because Drush happens to have, I mean, it has site aliases, it has systems to, re or to, uh, to specify specific parameters for a command line uh, or for a command by default in those aliases and all of those things made it really simple to write this tool that ends up being simple in the end. Um, yeah, and really all it does is you give it, uh, you give it, you have a special like deploy.drushrc file and you give it the basic parameters uh, and it will, actually I can show that, uh, that part. Are we ready to switch? Yeah. Yeah. yeah.
I could talk a little bit about yeah. deploy while you're getting Go set ahead. up. Sorry. Um, okay, so one of the fundamental ideas around Drush deploy is a site list. Okay, and uh, site lists are a feature of Drush. Um, we talked a little bit about site aliases before, how you can have an alias that points to a remote server. Um, and Drush will SSH over to that server and execute whatever commands you want. A, a list is basically a collection of remote servers, okay? And so when you run Drush deploy, you run it over a list of servers, typically. So you say, I need to deploy a new code, code, code tag to my staging servers. And you've set up, which, you set up a site list of staging servers. Um, and so. Mark will go over that a little bit, but... Uh. Yeah, so, so I can show you the basics here. Um, so I just have this one site alias set up. Uh, like Mosh said, you usually use this with site alias groups, where if you have multiple in the same file, it'll just go across them all. Um, I only have one set up here, but that's sort of the, the, minimal, uh, the minimal setup for a typical site alias. And here's the deploy.drushrc file. Uh, so you can give it an applica application name because it supports multiple applications on the same server. Uh, let me make this a little bigger, perhaps. Yeah, you tell it what Git repository you're deploying from, and here I just have like the like my fork of Presslow. Um, what branch to deploy from? So in this case, this would be like a dev setup, so it's just master. Uh, keep releases. So every every time uh, Drush deploys, it deploys to a new directory, and then it swaps a symlink. And so if you want to say keep some of those around, you can like by default it just keeps around three. Uh, and then uh, new, new deploys will delete the other ones so that your disk doesn't fill up from, from big deploys. Um, deploy via sets, a, uh, sets the strategy you want to use. There's like a pluggable strategy class uh, for, how, for how deploy actually puts code on the server. Uh, the remote cache uh, basically just, it doesn't do a full git clone every time. It has one git clone in a shared directory and then uh, it fetches on that so that it has all the refs that it needs, R syncs into a new directory, and then just checks out the tag that you want, uh, which is much, much faster than, than actually doing the clone. And then you, you, aren't, uh, you aren't like pulling in place. Uh, it's much safer to just uh, fetch and then check out your tag. And you just need to tell it where the Docker is. And I uh, put one example of a task here. Uh, it, we, Drush Deploy supports this concept of tasks because of, as it is, it doesn't seem probably that useful to just have a command that puts your code on a server because you're probably, th probably thinking, yes, I can do that. Um, there's a little bit more to it, that, to that, but uh, it has a really powerful notion of tasks where if you just define a function in this file and then give it the annotation task, uh, Drush Deploy will know that it is a task and it'll register it. And then uh, there's actually another annotation that's not, that I don't have in here, where you can say, um, this task runs before or after a certain event, like the symlink is the big event. Um, and if any of you have dealt with Capistrano, this is a, the exact same concept, uh, where the symlink means everything went fine with the deploy, and I'm now sim I'm, my current symlink is now gonna go to this new directory. So beforehand, if there was like some checks you wanted to run, you can just write them as tasks. And then uh, every task and every Drush operation has to exit zero. Uh, for the entire thing to complete. If anything exits one, then the entire thing is rolled back. Um, it's, it's basically a big transaction. And so, Yeah, and you can see it just made sure that it had the directories it needs and then, then it's basically ready to go. So now we'll do a drush deploy. Yeah, and so you can see it's uh, SSH and in for me, um, doing the git clone, then the git checkout, and then updating the revision. Yeah, so then that, that works just fine. And if I go to, actually I could probably dress that, SSH that. Yeah, whatever, I forget how that works. Alias first. Yeah, so deploy is a little different. Usually you put your alias first and then you run the command. Um, because when you put the alias first, that's telling Drush, everything after this 
run this Drush command on the remote server, right? And deploy runs entirely on your machine. All it does is the SSH, it SSHs into the command or into the other server uh, to check out the code. You actually don't have to have Drush on the other uh, server for deploy to work. Um, so in deploy, it's taking your alias as a parameter, right? So it's just an argument to that command and then I can get that alias and then look up all the information about how to SSH into the machine separately. So if you have a, if you have a Drush command that you don't necessarily want Drush to exist on the other server, you, want, you don't want that to be a requirement, you can always uh, just take the alias as an argument. And there's also Drush SSH. We added that recently. I don't know if a lot of people don't use that yet. Um, so then when I look into here, I have the deploy directory. That's the application name I had. Yeah, and you can see that current symlink is pointing to uh, the release I just did that's all timestamped. And then if you look in releases, there's only one. Um, but the, yeah, that's what that does. It uh, might seem simple, but it's a, it sort of packages all of the best practices about deployment uh, up for you. And I've noticed that, I mean, uh, it's rare that, uh, that custom deployment setups are taking care of all the same things. Uh, because if you don't, especially if you don't have like really expensive tasks like update.php every time you deploy, uh, this will let you very easily do a zero downtime deploy where uh, you just switch over. I mean, you can even actually do expensive tasks and you do all those expensive tasks before the symlink. Uh, and then as long as that happens, uh, you just switch over right at the end and you're, and you're good to go. So, yeah, that's just deploy. Uh, yes? Does it work No. Um, it could. That part of just deploy is pluggable. But um, someone else is going to have to write that. I have it in my contract that I don't use SVN. So. Uh, let's, let's just hold the questions because we're nearly at the end and then people can go to the microphone and ask questions. Um, the last uh, project we want to talk about in the Drush ecosystem is Cache Audit. Um, yes. You're on. So uh, Cache Audit is super, super simple. Um, and it's a good example of of how simple it is to write Drush commands and how like if you have a small need like this, I would highly encourage everyone to just write these small little Drush extensions, even if it's a custom thing for your site, um, because they can be, it's just time saving to just put things on the command line sometime. So in, so if, you're, if you normally need to look, look at a new site and figure out what's being cached, what isn't, uh, especially with views, if you, uh, if you're trying to figure out why this, why this page is taking a long time, I have a bunch of views on that page and you have to go through every single view to go check the cache settings on each one. That's really tedious. Um, so I wrote cache audit that you can just do drush cache audit. It's only one command, no arguments. And it gives you a really nice brief overview of all of the core cache settings. So you can check release easily. I mean, it's something you can also uh, check for um, like consistency on a deployment to make sure that like these settings are set to the things that you that you need to have set, uh, and then for each view, for and every, every display of that view, why did that look so bad? Oh well, the columns are odd, but oh, because of this resolution. But you can see the cache settings, uh, whether block cache is enabled. Um, and what the times are for each view. So you can quickly audit uh, your site to see which, which views are not being cached so you can go cache them easily. Um, and there's, there's a patch in the queue to add panels support. Uh, so if you're using panels and you're using pane cache, you might take a look at that. Uh, it still needs to be reviewed. And I think the CDN module, there's a hook in it uh, where any contrib module can implement that hook and then add their own cache settings to it. So the CDN module has done this, for example. All right, well, um, that's the uh, Drush ecosystem that we wanted to talk about today. I hope you guys have some questions. Um, why don't you just uh, come up to the mic here and um, kick it off. Uh, hi, um, these tasks that you just showed to us, are these to be run every time a new deploy is done or are related to a particular deploy? Yeah, so that would actually happen on every single deploy. For example, you did a change in the source code uh, in the module, and that needs, for example, to run a Drush update DB 
for that yeah. particular thing to, when it's deployed? Yeah, so good question. And let me pull up the readme so I have a reference. Yeah, so here's the example right here. Um, that type of thing is something you want to control per deploy. You, it's probably not a great idea to say, I mean, so my deploys used to be, I mean, by default, I would always do Drush CC all. Um, Drush features revert, because that's an item component process that always is gonna happen. Um, uh, but update DB doesn't always need to happen, right? So, or there might be other, expen or the other expensive processes, like maybe on some deploys, you need to rebuild node access, God forbid. Um, but that's not something that you want to necessarily hard code in this because your Drush deploy file is likely going to be committed into source control um, and you don't want to hard code that so, because you, you're going to want to change it from deploy to deploy. Uh, what I do, in, I mean what I used to do in Capistrano and in this, uh, I would say, so this is the line, this options uh, after deploy symlink. That means I'm going to run that custom task after the symlink. I would set up those, like have all your tasks in that file and then set all those up with all of the expensive ones or the ones that you don't do every time, comment it out and open this up and uncomment it right when you're doing your deploy. Because that's something like this is made to do the deploy. I mean like Jenkins isn't doing this deploy, like you're going to be doing it um, most of the time. And so that bit of a manual process, uh, I don't really see as that big of an inconvenience because you're going to have to make those decisions anyways. Um, and so yeah, you just really uncomment them. I have been struggling with um, site aliases. For example, two developers working on the same project, I'd like to, both of them use the same site alias definition. But one has uh, his development environment set up differently and has different uh, paths of uh, uh, um, uh, web routes defined. Um, is there a way to override for, for project base uh, the site aliases or is there another solution for this? Are you, are you working on the same server as the other person, or how, how do you, are you set Lo up? Local developments yeah. uh, on the computer, and they, I'd like to, um, to share the same site alias file, because it's centrally um, set up and maintained and uh, uh, stored. In, in. Yeah, and are the site aliases that are inside the file are pointing to remote servers that you both use, or? And, and both remote servers and local servers for their own uh, dev. All right. So, yeah, what's the use case for site aliases locally? Um, they can um, have, we have one script to pull the database from uh, acceptance or life to development environment. And there's one script that uses the same alias. Uh, uh, uh. So pull from acceptance to dev and so they have the same script. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that the sites that are local should be in a different file than the sites that are remote. And the local one, you basically maintain in your home directory and do what you want with it. So yeah, that, yeah, it, that's a solution. And the only other, I mean, if you, if you really want to do this, well, I mean, one of the nice things about our configuration files being PHP is that you can sort of do whatever you want. Um, you could do something like, like look, like check, uh, or like do a, like a git env, um, yep. local env, and then like have, like get somebody's name and then do a switch based on that and then have all that in code and then just make sure that everyone exports that variable in their bash RC. Or include a, a local file. Well, that you can have two. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or it includes a local file if it's yep. there. That's it's actually, there. A, yep. that's the way you usually do that with like setting stuff PHP. Yeah, okay. Uh, I have a question about uh, installation of Drush because um, for a while there has been this uh, Debian package which I always found like really useful because I was running Debian anyway and then I recently read that um, that's not the preferred way to install Drush anymore so could you just comment yes. on that? or? Yeah, so we had that uh, and we were working on maintaining that a little better so that we could um, 
Because yeah, I mean, having Drush in apps is really inconvenient. Um, like lots of packages in Ubuntu, they just get outdated really, really quickly, right? So it's and they also can't change a major version with a um, within that. So you can't have so if Drush four is on whatever version of Ubuntu, we can't then just upgrade that to Drush five because it's a major version. So it just doesn't work well. And if we were going to really make that better, we'd also need to do it for Yum and everything else. Um, I. Just tried, I figured, well, we have Pear. And I noticed I was installing PHP unit with Pear. And it's like, well, how hard would it be to do that? And so I set that up, and it actually works really well. And so for probably over a year now, uh, we have set up pear.drush.org. And it's a custom Pear channel, which I mean, most, uh, most, most things you install from Pear have custom channels nowadays. And all you do is you just pear channel discover pear.drush.org, pear install drush slash drush. And that's it. Um, if you go to the Drush, um, the Drush project page, I'm pretty sure it has those instructions on there. And I mean, it's it might be I mean, you you need to make sure you have a recent version of Pear. Uh, PHP has the same uh, the same limitation, and you can just upgrade your Pear. But I would if you have any trouble doing that, I would really highly suggest just um, just getting through that and making it work because we as a community we tend not to use packages that much. Like we don't use Pear very often. Um, Composer is fixing a lot of that. We're starting to use that more, but we're, we're generally kind of bad at sharing code because of that. And Pear does suck. It, there's a lot of things about it that are wrong, but it's what we have. So as PHP developers, we should probably be more comfortable with using it, is my opinion. Yeah, thanks. And certainly folks who want to just get clone Drush and follow along and run head or run a stable release, um, that's a perfectly fine way to you know, keep up with Drush um, also. So yeah, use Pear, I, use Git, whatever you prefer. I would say usually it's like, the, and Pear will be updated like that the day we make a release, except that it's not right now because my laptop broke when I was here, and so I don't have my SSH keys. Uh, so I'm going to do it soon. Sorry about that. Okay. I, I wondered if you could say two things about the distinction or maybe how complementing a gear and Drush deploy would be. As in like which use case or best practice when to use which. So Drush deploy is, is, is more for a single site. I mean you could do it in a big multi-site setup, but like what Drush deploy does is, uh, is sort of a small part of what Agar does. And Agar actually uses a very similar process. They just, they actually just symlink into the Docker root instead of sim linking the entire Docker root. Uh, but they, they use the, a very similar process and a good technique. But really, I, I would say the, that's, an issue, that's an issue of whether a, the, like you have a good use case for Agar or not. Um, if you don't, Drush, I mean, Drush Deploy is going to work for pretty much any site uh, as long as you have, are deploying from Git and you have S, or you're deploying via SSH. But uh, I mean, Agar is much more geared towards just a massively, like, massive multi site where you're constantly creating new sites. If that answers the question. Yeah, that's, I mean, we're yep. using Agir, so basically, kind of adding Drush Deploy to this whole concept wouldn't really give much more like beneficial functionality or something. So that's how I understand, understood you. Okay, yep. thanks. Hi, is there also maybe a site configurator or a site uh, generator where I just um, write a little file and you know I say okay this website has this and this menu, this template, this block, blah blah blah. I write a, a text file and now click on a button and then the complete website is generated maybe in Italian, maybe in English, maybe so that I don't have to click in the administration, site building, blah blah blah, menu, blocks, etc. Or, um, you know. So, are you proposing a new project for Drush that, that is like a text file spec for your website? Yeah, maybe just a generator, a site generator. So, yeah. Uh, it seems like that there's a lot of overlap with that idea in, say, like features and install profiles. Yeah, and Drush Make to a certain extent is a little bit like a text file that defines your website. So, there are pieces of that out there. Um, I, I think what you described. Uh, is a really big project, um, so that's probably why people haven't taken it on. But it certainly would be handy to be able to write a text file one afternoon and have a website come out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay, so there's a comment here that uh, there's a Drupal 6 project called Bone that attempted to do this sort of thing. So perhaps someone will revive Bone and uh, save us from all our consulting hours. <laughs> Any other questions about Drush or Drush ecosystem? Uh, all right. Oh, there is sorry. one. Great. Yeah, one last question. Uh, regarding uh, CTools export, uh, I didn't get exactly the difference uh, or how is it difference, uh, different between features? Is it made to take over features or uh, can you elaborate, please? Um, so I'm definitely not the expert on CTools export or uh, as a collection and share features with other people and so forth. Well, and, and the functionality, I mean, that's not new. It's just it, like, because their CTools has always had like the import, uh, export uh, UI. And then the old way of doing this before features was you took that export and you put it in a file and then CTools would load it. The only thing the Drush command did is it made it, it automated taking that and then putting it in a module and doing all that stuff for you, which then makes it sort of overlap with features because it's easy to export that way. But the functionality is, is something that's been there actually before features existed. I think. And features actually uses the exact same code that CTools is generating. So features is like an extra set of yeah, and so, and so as long as all of your exportables are CTools exportables, you could potentially use that, I think, instead of features. Uh, yeah, one other question, not strictly related to the ecosystem, but um, can you tell us anything about, like, your plans for Drush? What's, what's next for Drush, or any big features, or? Um, we're, you know, we worked really hard to get Drush 5 out, and we're kind of in a, um, blissful rest period now with Drush as far as Drush 6. So, you know, I'm open to everyone's ideas about what Drush 6 should do and, you know, future versions of Drush. But I, I guess we don't really have concrete plans for the next version and what we might add there. Okay. Yeah, I think it's likely we'll do some internal refactoring to make it more OO. Um, probably not, like, as, as intense as Drupal 8, but... Um, but some simple like cleanup and refactoring. I, I honestly, I, w I, I don't want to add any features. I mean, I think the Drush core as a framework is, is getting really close to being feature complete. Um, and so I just want to make a, a stabler core Drush that makes it simpler and easier for people to write commands for it. Cool, thanks. I was curious, somebody mentioned the idea of using Drush to download a copy of the production website to a development environment or your local laptop. Do you have any suggestions about additional commands you might want to use and other modules that would extend those? For example, to sanitize the database? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, well, just uh, around uh, slinging whole sites around, that's the archive dump um, command if people haven't used it. So, um, or is it the site archive? No, archive dump, right, archive dump. So. Um, this command uh, will take the code for your site and the database for your site and the files for your site and zip them all up into one tarball, okay? So you can move that somewhere else and restore it somewhere. Um, it's actually a, a standard Drupal format, the site archive format. Um, and there's a corresponding archive restore Drush command that is for untarring those files and uh, restoring your Drupal site. Um, Greg also mentioned uh, sanitizing your database. Um, this is a feature of the SQL sync command. SQL sync in Core Drush allows you to move your database from one server to another server, um, typically using site aliases to move it uh, to a remote server. And you can sanitize along the way, which is to say you can remove the passwords and email addresses if you want to. Um, Sanitize is pluggable, so if your site has more confidential information than uh, just email addresses and passwords, you can implement a hook and scrub that data out of the, the database dump. Um, it can be useful if you're providing a database dump to all your developers. You might want to sanitize it first. You have less um, PII going out to your dev team and possibly getting uh, leaked that way. Um, the sanitize release, the sanitize um, functionality can be used on its own. There's a SQL sanitize command. So if you're not doing a SQL sync and you just want to sanitize uh, my SQL dump that you have, you can just do it that way too. 
Yeah, but I, I, uh, lots of sites implement their own commands to like pull their code and their database and sync to local environments. And sometimes that's necessary, but it's really worth checking out Drush rsync and Drush SQL sync because it's, it, I think it's pretty likely that those commands would actually do it all for you. Just an, another uh, project that does similar is Drush Fetcher. That's a sandbox that Howard just released like last week. And that um, kind of builds your entire development environment and gets your database and you know sets up your Apache and get pulls from Git and gets any sub modules and does all that stuff. So it's worth checking that out too. Cool. Yeah, Drush Drush Fetcher uh, sandbox by Howard Tyson. Okay. Yeah, check that one out. I know the Vagrant module has some Drush integration, which is pretty neat. Um, there was a Drubuntu. Um, project, which I think is a little bit passe now. Um, perhaps Quick Start is the one that um, sets up your Drush for you and sets up your whole um, environment for you to do development. Um, so check that one out also. All right, well, please uh, give us feedback um, by searching for Drush Ecosystem and filling out um, what you thought of our session. Uh, last thing I want to add is that we have some Acquia t shirts here. So feel free to come up and get, grab a t-shirt around the edge of the table here. Um, thanks for coming. See you later.